Grace and peace to you all. Welcome to worship here at Unity Presbyterian Church. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or worshiping online, whether you are a first-time visitor or a lifelong member, know that you are most welcome here. I encourage those of you here in the sanctuary to take a moment and find the friendship pad. It should be on one end of your pew. If you will pick that up and sign your name and pass it along, taking note of the names of those worshiping around you. And if you are visiting with us, if you would leave us an email or phone number, I would love to connect with you later this week. So that way, hopefully, no one will leave here a stranger today. This morning, we are collecting a special offering for Thornwell, one of our mission partners here in South Carolina. They uh, support families that are struggling to stay together, um, but they also support children who are in the foster care system. So you can donate to that special um, offering today. The instructions are in your bulletin if you would like to know more about Thornwell. Youth Choir starts back today. We hope that all of you youth will stay this afternoon and make a joyful noise together as we head into the Advent season. You're all invited. And then you also have a Friendsgiving this afternoon. We hope you'll return for. More information about those are also in your announcements. All right, this week is Thanksgiving and next week is Advent. There is a lot coming up in our Advent season. I hope you will take note of all the announcements because they're all worth your attention. Today we do have our Advent devotions ready for you to pick up there on the table in the narthex. You all help to write these um, as well as illustrate. There is beautiful artwork and beautiful words. So I hope you will pick one of those up for your family today. Also, if you are looking for a soundtrack for the season, instructions on how to find our Unity Yuletide playlist are in your bulletin. So look that up and listen to that all season long. Those are our staff favorite songs. Next Sunday, December the 1st, we are kicking off Advent with our Advent Workshop. It is an all-church event at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. I hope you will join us. We will be making Advent wreaths that we can use all season long. So put that on your calendar and join us next Sunday for that. Advent also brings some new opportunities for service. Our angel tree will be set up in the narthex starting next Sunday for you all to pick off angels and to supply gifts for several of our mission partners here in Fort Mill. So look for that. And next week is also peanut butter and jelly Sunday. So take note in your bulletin of what items are most helpful right now. 
Looking further ahead, we have our All Church Caroling event coming up on December 8th. That's in two weeks. We go caroling to some of our local members here in Fort Mill, and then we come back for chili and s'mores and bonfires. So put that on your calendar, and if you have a favorite chili recipe and would be willing to share that, let me know. We're still looking for folks to bring chili for dinner that night. And looking further ahead, also mark your calendars for December 14th. That is our birthday party for Jesus. Uh, There is lots of wonderful festivities that morning, so we hope you will be there for that as well. And here to tell us about two more Advent opportunities are Ken Bickett and Jane Hudson. Good morning. Molly told me to make this quick, which the people who know me in the choir know that won't be easy, so I wrote it down. This year, to decorate the church, it's fallen on Thanksgiving week. I have got a great team in the past couple years who've worked, but Thanksgiving week, a lot of my team are going to be out of town visiting family, and a lot have family in town, so we've got a problem. Brian Rail has offered very nicely to be here at 9.30 Tuesday morning to get started instead of doing it on, all on the Saturday that follows that. So if you can be here at 9.30 and like to decorate, please join us. If you can be here Saturday at night, uh, and for that one, don't even let me know. But if you want to come Saturday, do let me know your name, your uh, phone number, your email address, just in case we get everything done Tuesday so you don't show up and there won't be anybody here. So Tuesday or Saturday, and I'm Jane Hudson, and I'm in the directory if you want to let me know. Thanks. Good morning. Um, I, I, before I say anything, let me bring greetings from the 845 service. Uh, I didn't know there was an 11 o'clock service. <laughs> Being regular at 845, this is really strange to be here at 11. I've had several people walk up to me and say, Ken, is there a problem? Uh, but I was asked to speak for just a minute uh, this morning, and for those of you here at 11 that do know me, you know that that'll be hard for me to speak for just a minute. Um, but I'll try. And I, and I got to admit, I'm a bit nervous uh, because uh, Molly, Reverend Molly, sent me the rules for minute permission, the Ken Bickett version. And as you can see, uh, <laughs> I guess Molly talked to uh, Jeannie and found out that even my own family which I can attest to right now, will not come when I speak in public or help at the ladies' auction uh, because they're afraid of what I might say or what I might do. So it can happen. But I am thrilled to be here this morning uh, to talk to you, to encourage you, if possible, to please come to the ladies' auction, which is Monday, December the 2nd, right here in the Fellowship Hall. It starts at 530 Uh, The men's ministry is hosting a hot dog dinner, so come prepared to have a hot dog. Uh, There's no charge for the hot dogs, but there is a contribution basket there if you'd like to make a contribution uh, for that. Let's see here. Um, And now to get pretty serious, those of you that have attended the auction in the past, and I see several people in here that are regular attendees, know that I am absolutely the furthest thing from an auctioneer that you can possibly imagine. But we have fun. I have been fired from this job multiple times. (laughs) That's true. But I keep coming back, and each time I promise this year I will behave. That ain't gonna happen. One of my fondest memories of doing the auction with the ladies is that uh, one year we had Patty and Billy Barron sitting side by side and they were bidding against each other. (laughs) And that is the honest truth. Last year, we had Reverend Molly and Reverend Matt bidding against each other, but they were on separate sides of the room, and they were much nicer than Billy and Patty to each other. (laughs) What I love about the auction the most is that this is the one time that you can go and pay way too much for an item and feel so good about paying too much for it. Think of it this way. 
every dime that's raised, and that's the auction as well as the hot dog donations, will go to the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, and that's earmark, earmarked for the Helene relief efforts, and also the Fort Mill Care Center. There's all kind of good items that are gonna be there to bid on. There's crafts, there's home goods, there's even a boat ride on Lake Wiley uh, with me. Uh, that's scary. And uh, fantastic cakes and baked goods. So I want you to look at it this way. Say you come to the auction and you pay $100 for one of Miss Patsy's pies or cakes. You've really actually helped someone that was in need. Forget that you paid $100 for the cake or the pie. So it's a win-win. Somebody will have a much better holiday season and you'll have a cake to boot. It's a good deal for everybody. And there's also a special opportunity that exists. If you come to the auction and you don't see anything that you're eager to bid on, please feel free to stop by the auction desk and make a donation to the ladies there at the desk in a check or cash and that money will be also used for the relief. So everyone is invited. Bring a friend, bring a neighbor, uh, and also children are encouraged. This year, in fact, I've heard a rumor that there might just be a special guest to join us at the auction. I'm not allowed to say who that guest might be, but I will tell the kids. He normally travels by sleigh. So, I look forward to seeing you at the auction. If you've got any questions, uh, Joan, Joan and Beverly will be in the Narthex after the service. Thank you so much. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> Please stand if you're able and join me with the call to worship. What is truth? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We have heard Jesus' name, Jesus called by many names. Son of God, the Messiah, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. As we worship together, may we come to know Christ more fully. Let us worship Christ the King.
Please be seated. Friends, we gather at this font to remember that God loved us so much that he sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. In that good news and that knowledge, let us now join in a time of prayer together, first together in the prayer found in your bulletin, and then our silent prayers individually prayed. Let us pray. Lord, However much we call you king, we fail to follow your call to us. We succumb to the political temptations of this temporary world, seeking power and security while you call us to service and hospitality, consuming your creation while you call us to care for it, hating our neighbors who you call us to love. In our failure to claim you, we identify more with the nations of this world than with your kingdom. We pray that you reclaim us as your people. Forgive us as your children and continue to be our Lord and our hope for salvation. Amen. Friends, in Christ we have a king who willingly gave up power to give us the gifts of grace, forgiveness, and love. Hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Stand. First scripture reading today comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 through 10 and 13 through 14. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and hair was, on his head was pure as wool. His throne was fiery flames, and the wheels were burning fire, a stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One, and he was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite our young friends, the children, to join me up front on the carpet. And if you are worshiping online and want to scooch a little closer to your screens so we all might share in a special word together.
Good morning, friends. How are you today? Good. I'm so glad. Thank you all for being here. Worship is better every time you all are here. So thank you for worshiping with us today. I have a question. Have you all ever heard of a king? Yeah? Okay. What do you, how would you recognize a king? If you saw a king, what would, what would some of the things be? Probably have a crown. You're right. Maybe some fancy clothes too. Yeah. What else? Where do, where do you think a king might live? Maybe in a castle. Yeah, somewhere really big. You think the king might have like a lot of people working for him to do things he needs done? Does that sound about right? Maybe the king has a lot of stuff that he owns or money. Kings, we usually think about being pretty powerful, right? Yeah. Well, did you know that one of the names that we have for Jesus in the Bible is Christ the King? Yeah, isn't that a surprise? Because Jesus didn't really act like a king, did he? Instead of keeping lots of things for himself, he gave away what he had. Instead of having a lot of people working for him, he served other people. He helped take care of other people his whole life. And he didn't usually wear a crown while he was here on earth. He wore some pretty simple robes, and he definitely didn't live in a castle. He traveled on the road a lot, and he stayed with people that he knew and complete strangers, just trusting the hospitality of other people. Does that sound like the kings we know on earth? No, it doesn't. Well, people were confused. They didn't understand how Jesus could be a king when he was living like that. But we know Jesus pretty well from the stories in the Bible. And Jesus asked us to follow him. So if we're following Jesus by the example he set us, what are some ways that we can love people around us like he did? What are some ways we can show his love? Yeah. By being kind. That's a big one. That's a big one. What else? By saying thank you, yes. I hope we do that a lot this week. That would be great. By making... Oh, yes, we can make banners. We can make banners to tell people about Jesus' love. That's a great one. Anything else? Those are some great ideas. I hope that we can work to do that this week and as we head into Advent, as we remember that Jesus is our King. Can you do that with me? Awesome. All right, well, let's pray before we head out. Dear God, God, thank you for Jesus Jesus. and the example he gave us us. as King. king. Help us us. to follow his example, example. showing love to all people. people. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here. You can head back to sit with your families or to children in worship or the nursery as we surround you with our blessing. We were just talking about today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday of our liturgical year before Advent begins next Sunday. Our second scripture passage this morning is typically one that we would hear during Holy Week. It takes place right after Jesus was arrested and before he was crucified. This passage is usually called the trial before Pilate. But as we read, we will quickly see that Jesus is actually the one holding court here. He is the judge and the king, and Pilate is the one who finds himself being interrogated and being forced to face the truth of his life. 
So let us listen now for the word of the Lord from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 38. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, May your spirit rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing and in our listening, in our speaking and in our living. Amen. What is truth? Little did Pilate know that his question was going to be so relevant in 2024, because let's be honest, there is a lot of misinformation out there. Especially leading up to this year's election, there have been many conversations about what is real and what is fake, what information is true, and what messages are lies. And this week, right now, before Thanksgiving, is a great time for this conversation because one of my favorite misinformation posts on social media is how to microwave a turkey. (laughs) Now let me be clear, you cannot microwave a turkey. You can, it just won't be cooked or safe to eat. But I'm not telling you right now to microwave your turkey. But every year around this time, I see several posts about this topic pop up with lots of comments on it. The most recent one I saw this week said, I plan on doing a practice turkey this weekend. How long do I need to microwave the turkey for the best result? I have a 1500 watt microwave and a 10 pound turkey, thanks in advance. One person replied to this post saying, I did the math. It's 75 minutes on high and a lifetime of counseling for your family. (laughs) The next comment said, the trick is to use two microwaves and have them open face to face. (laughs) Double the space and double the power for that juicy 10 pounder. And my favorite and very practical comment was, the key to a successful turkey dinner by microwave is to preheat the microwave. (laughs) This step is often overlooked. Yes, I admit, I love a good fake turkey cooking post, but in reality, misinformation can do more than make us laugh. It can also cause harm. So we might ask ourselves in a time and place when so much information is literally at the tip of our fingers, how do we know what is truth and what is not? Whose voices do we listen to and trust? Following the recent election, there have been many studies to see just where Americans are getting their information from. An article published this month from CNBC says about one in five Americans regularly get their news from news influencers on social media, according to a new Pew Research Center study. 
In case you're unfamiliar with the term influencer, influencers are people who create online presences to promote products and services, to build brand trust, and to shape audience opinions. Basically, these are people who make money to convince us that we should buy certain products, vote for certain candidates, and even behave in certain ways. But no matter where we get our news, every day there are voices using every type of communication constantly bombarding us with information. How do we discern truth from all that noise? What is truth? The theme of truth is central in the Gospel of John. In John 8, Jesus says, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And in John 14, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The word truth here in Greek is aletheia. It means truth, but not merely spoken words. It's the truth of idea, of reality, of the moral sphere. It's the divine truth revealed to humanity through Christ. Truth in the Gospel of John is so much more than just a recitation of facts. Truth is the revelation of God through Christ God's unconditional love and grace for all people. And ironically, in our story, even though Jesus is standing in front of him, Pilate can't see it. Pilate's job in this courtroom is to figure out what is true, supposedly, yet he cannot see past his own reality to understand what Jesus is offering him. Pilate is one of the most powerful people in Jerusalem at this time. He has the power to release Jesus or to condemn him to death. And yet, he is the one who is trapped. In fact, many scholars believe that Pilate is really the one on trial here, not Jesus. Dr. Pete Perry says, though Pilate is supposedly in control, he is absolutely trapped in fear. The religious leaders want Jesus crucified. If Pilate doesn't give them what they want, can he stay in control? Does he have enough troops to quell the trouble those leaders might stir up? How will it play back in Rome if on his watch he's not able to handle matters in Jerusalem? The mob is on one side. Rome is on the other, and Pilate is trapped in the middle in fear. When he asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? We have to wonder, does he really believe that Jesus is an insurrectionist? Or is he just having this conversation to keep the mob outside happy so he can maintain his position of power? The truth of Pilate's life is that he's trapped in a system that requires him to act out of fear to maintain this illusion of control, no matter what the cost. And Jesus sees this. He knows Pilate's reality, and as he questions Pilate, he's trying to draw out Pilate's truth. Jesus says, do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? When he says this, Jesus is inviting Pilate to be transparent, to share how it is with him, to utter the truth of his own life. And yet, even with Jesus' invitation to him, Pilate continues with the charade. He continues to ask Jesus questions about his kingdom and his kingship, all while Jesus continues to offer Pilate a way out of the system he is trapped in. Jesus says, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. In other words, he's saying to Pilate, God's truth is for you as well. 
even you are invited to belong. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and in this passage, we see just what Jesus' kingship looks like. It looks like Jesus on trial for his life, still offering all he has to give to the people around him. Dr. Perry goes on in his commentary on this passage. He says, even to Pilate, Jesus offers to be the good shepherd, the good shepherding king, who, when his sheep listen to his voice, are led to abundant life. This is always Jesus' offer, but to receive it means facing the truth about our lives, the truth Jesus holds up before us, Pilate refuses to face the truth. At the end of their interrogations, Pilate says, what is truth? Jesus is the truth. And he's literally standing in front of Pilate, looking him in the face, and Pilate dismisses all he has to offer. Freedom, belonging, grace and love, and abundant life. With, with his dismissal of Christ, he refuses to face the truth of his own life and to remain trapped in a system that causes fear and hurt and pain. Pilate dismisses Jesus because he's unwilling to see the truth right before his eyes. Friends, Jesus' invitation is for Pilate, but it's also for you and for me. This invitation is at the heart of the good news from our text today because the truth of Jesus Christ can set us free, but only if we're willing to see it and hear it. As Christ offers us his divine truth, we are challenged to examine the truth of our own lives, both as individuals and as a community of faith. Because like Pilate, we are all a part of systems of power and oppression that are purposefully designed to remain invisible until we shed light on them. And the systems that do the most harm are the most difficult to see by those who benefit from them. Systems of race, money, power, gender, ability, education, are we willing to see the truth? There are plenty of voices out there working to influence us and convince us these systems don't exist, but they do. And the harm they cause is real. Jesus was on trial for his life, and he was then still trying to dismantle, dismantle these systems. Because his kingdom, although it is not from this world, is for the transformation of this world. Christ came to make all things new, and if we are to be a part of the work of Christ's kingdom, that means we too must work to recognize and dismantle systems that cause harm. As we look towards this new liturgical year, Perhaps we can begin this season by examining the truth of our lives. What voices do we allow to influence us? Whose voice do we trust? Does all that we say and do reflect the love and grace given to us by Christ our King? It's my hope that we might discern some answers to these questions in the days to come. Because thanks be to God, the truth can set us free. Let us pray. God of truth, help us to lean in and examine the truth of our lives. Help us to see the systems around us that keep us and others trapped in hurt and pain and guide us to identify them and to dismantle them the way you showed us how, until all of your children might have the wholeness and abundant life you offer. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin to respond to God's call for our lives, I invite you to stand as you are able as we join in the words from a brief statement of faith found in your bulletin. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel, unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. You may be seated. We continue our response to the word read and proclaimed as we gather our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, abundant provider, you bless us with the gifts from the earth and you spread out a table of goodness from which all can share. On this Sunday before Thanksgiving Day, we join in giving you thanks for the many blessings we enjoy, even as we also are mindful of the times when we stray, thinking that we can go it alone and handle things ourselves. But in our emptiness, you call us home, and you celebrate and rejoice at our return and surround us with the grace that knows no limits. You, O oh God, are the source of all good gifts. It is to you that we lift our prayers of grateful thanksgiving and our prayers of concern. We give thanks for this country and for all those who have gone before and labored to bring us the freedoms we enjoy. May our leaders today have that same vision that they might work tirelessly for human dignity, liberty, and justice in all decisions that are made. We give thanks for family and friends, and especially for those people who have stood by us in our difficult times. We lift prayers for those who come to this holiday season grieving the loss of a loved one, even as we give thanks for the memories that sustain us in our loss. We give thanks for the laughter of children, for the joy we feel as we delight in your created world. We celebrate the wonder and the mystery of the earth to plant, the sky to watch, the flowers to smell, and the trees to provide shelter and beauty. Forgive us, O oh God, for not working harder to protect these precious gifts. We give thanks for the opportunity for education and for employment even as we lift up those people who face economic uncertainty in an uncertain world. Ease their anxiety, O oh Lord, with the peace of your presence. We give thanks to you for the gift of our physical bodies, for the exhilaration of exercise and the benefits of health. But we also lift up those who struggle with pain and illness, ease their burdens, and bring healing of mind, 
body, spirit, and relationships. With one voice, we continue to pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the psalmist calls us to come into God's presence with thanksgiving and praise because the Lord is good and full of steadfast love. So let us now bring to God the tithes and the offerings of our hearts and our hands.
Let us pray. Oh God, your goodness surrounds us. Your grace sustains us. Your mercy redeems us. And by your love, we are saved. We come before you now offering our praise for your indwelling spirit and giving you thanks for Jesus Christ, the King who offers us new life. Placing before you now the fruits of our labors, we confess anew our trust in your goodness. We rely on your grace. We are in the hands of your mercy as we seek to love others as you command us. We offer our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. as our time of worship draws to a close and our lives of worship and service begin anew this day, let us go from this place with the truth of Christ our King in our hearts and the courage to examine the truth of our own lives as well. And as we go, remember, life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So what shall we do? Be swift to love. Make haste to be kind, that God's light and love, justice and joy might be for you and all people everywhere. Amen. Amen.